The standard in which Portons Park are set in across the UK theme parks in terms of theme and investment is second to none. At the moment, the last few years, they are heads and shoulders above everyone else. And when you look at the quality they have, the quality they put into it, it's very, very hard to say sort of what you would ditch and what you would keep at Portons Park. But we're going to let you know now what our thoughts are. And let me just say now, I don't think Portons Park really have any bad rides at all. I just think the standard they set for themselves, some of their older rides now don't fit their modern standards. And if I owned the park and I kind of looked out the window and saw Tornado Springs one side, Lost Kingdom the other side, Pepper Pig World in the middle, would I want a pirate ship randomly sitting next to it? No, I wouldn't. And that's the first one we would be ditching, the pirate ship. It just doesn't fit. I don't know whether or not it could be re-themed into another area. I don't know whether or not when they do the bottom end of the park and really bring it up to the standard of the sort of the newer areas, whether or not the pirate ship would fit. Possibly, possibly not. But for us, we're ditching it. And they have, unfortunately, a couple of other rides that also fit in this category and they're all pretty much down the same strip. So this includes the teacups, the Contiki ride, both of which for me don't have a place at the park if I owned it. Now let's talk about some positives here and rides I would 100% keep at Portons Park. Let's first look over in the Lost Kingdom with a couple of coasters and a couple of flat rides. So we have Velociraptor, a cracking boomerang ride, different as well to the one at Drayton Manor, which again makes it stand out a little bit more. Really, really popular family attraction. I'm keeping it. Flight of the Pterosaur, I think, is a, an amazing family ride. It really, really is an updated Vekoma suspended coaster, if you will, um, as opposed to the old standard one like Vampire. I think it just does wonders for the park. Good length, good throughput, works really, really well. I'm keeping it. Temple Heights and Boulder Dash fit the area really well. And of course, Temple Heights was um, one of those outcast rides that was re-themed into the area and has worked brilliantly. Dino Chase, on the other hand, was a ride that was re-themed into the area and it's just not something I would personally bother with. Given that the park have some much larger roller coasters now, including family ones, I just think Dino Chase doesn't have that role at the park. It reminds me very much of the Dino Coaster, oddly enough, at Legoland. I just don't see where it fits the demograph for a major theme park. And for me, I'm ditching it. Down the bottom end of the park, there are three rides, three rides next to each other in Magma, the drop sort of drop, sort of drop tower. We would be keeping that Cobra, fantastic Gerstlauer roller coaster, 100% keeping that. And Edge, the Mega Disco ride, the first in the UK, runs really, really well and is one we would 100% be keeping. Close by to it is the Dragon Roundabout. Again, it's kind of a bit out by itself and is not something I would keep at the park. In the middle of the park, we have two rides. We have the Wave Swinger, which sits next to the Lost Kingdom. Beautifully themed, beautiful looking Wave Swinger, double seats, functionality is brilliant. I would be keeping that at the park. And then you have a traveling log flume right opposite it. Now I know it's nice for the park to have a water ride, but it is something that I would not have in the park given the investment that's occurred over the last sort of five, six years. I have to say, if that investment hadn't happened, maybe I'd keep it. But if I was running Portons Park, the log flume would be next to go. On the theme of water rides, Buffalo Falls falls under the category of depth charge. I would get rid of it. I think the throughput is so low. It's in a real high spot area as well between Tornado Springs and Pepper Pig World. And it's been beautifully themed as part of the new area. But I'd ditch it. I would ditch it all the way. Now, we're not going to go through every ride in Peppa Pig World. I have to say, Peppa Pig World is a must, a must. And although we're not including themed areas so much in our UK top 40, I think Peppa Pig World is the best themed area we have in the UK. Closely followed by Thomas Land. And I do adore Thomas Land, and I grew up with Thomas the Tank Engine as opposed to Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig is just a cut above, an absolute cut above uh, popularity in everything. And that said, right next to it is the brand new Tornado Springs. And there is not a bad ride in there. Windmill Towers, I'm keeping. Trekking Tractors themed into the area, I'm keeping. The Cyclinator, one of the best gyro swings we have in the UK, I'm keeping. Owls Auto Academy, I think is brilliant. And this is the way that modern uh, driving school rides should go. I'm keeping that in the park. And of course, Storm Chaser. 
Storm Chaser, I think, is hugely, hugely underrated. It might not be original, but there'll be 99% of people in the UK that have never ridden it before, never ridden that model before, and it is quite unique for us. I'm 100% keeping it. Slower sort of track rides include the Grand Rio Train, given a new lease of life going through Tornado Springs. I think serves a little bit more of a purpose than some of the other train rides around. I would be keeping it. Back over to Lost Kingdom, we have the Dino Tour Ride as well. Beautifully themed, beautiful themed attraction. I would be keeping it. Professor Blast is another great attraction that I would keep at the park. And whilst we're down that area, the Caterpillar is the first roller coaster. That is your, your children's first roller coaster, not the Dino Chase, the Caterpillar. Fantastic ride, I'm keeping it at the park. And that leaves us with one more major attraction, which is the 4D Cinema. I don't think you can go wrong with a 4D Cinema, to be honest with you. I don't think it necessarily draws people in. I think if that was your new ride for the year, um, you might have some disappointing numbers coming in. But having that in the park and having the ability to change films pretty much as much as you want to keep it fresh, I think suits the park really, really well and any park really, really well, I would be keeping it. There you have it. That's my Portons Park keep and ditch. Which rides would you keep and ditch if you own Portons Park? Well, I don't know if any of these will make our top 40, but I think there's a good chance that a couple of them may well do. Portons Park's come on leaps and bounds, and if I own the park, I'd be very, very proud. Thanks for joining us here on UK Theme Parks. We'll see you next time.